Hmm. Yeah, I hope this, uh, I hope this zoomed. <laughs> Hello, plan friends. Welcome back for another episode. So I recently reached out to several plant YouTubers and asked them to contribute clips of their overrated and underrated plants. So in the last episode, we talked and shared their underrated plants. And in this episode, we'll be sharing the overrated plants. Um, buckle down, uh, prepare yourself for possibly some hurt feelings, some sparks. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's see what uh, some plant YouTubers consider to be overrated nowadays. So hope you guys enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Maddie from Ants in My Plants here on YouTube. I am a plant YouTuber from Australia. So Jimmy has asked myself as well as a couple of other plant YouTubers to collaborate in a video today to share with you guys what we consider is an underrated plant and an overrated plant. The plant that I'm going to pick for overrated. Now I'm not saying that I don't like them and I'm not saying that everyone that has one you know has it for the fact that it's so overrated so let's just get that out of the way <laughs> but the reason that i find this plant so overrated is the fact that it has so much hype all over social media the fact that it's a plant that's trendy that that's what annoys me about this certain plant everybody wants one just because it's trendy to have one and and this is just my opinion, but I don't feel like people should just buy plants because it's a trend. Like, yeah, it's a trend, but you bring it home, you gotta look after it. You can't just sit it in a nice little corner so it looks beautiful and then it dies because you don't know what you're doing and you've just purchased it because social media told you to purchase it. And that's the reason that I find this plant to be overrated and if you haven't already guessed what it may be yes it's the monstera deliciosa shock right now i understand why people love it it's easy to keep it grows really well it's stunning it makes a beautiful statement piece but the hype around them i don't get it there's so many other plants that are out there that are way, way more exciting than a Deliciosa. Like this guy doesn't even grow half as well as some of my other plants, like my Monstera Stiltepicana, for instance. I get more hype off that than I do off my Deliciosa. Now that's not saying that I don't love this plant because I do. If I was to make a list of my top five favorite plants in my collection, this probably wouldn't be on it. And obviously, no offense to anyone who loves Monstera Deliciosa, like I get why you do and yeah they're beautiful but um there are other plants out there that are more exciting to me but anyway that is my pick for a plant that I consider to be most overrated um I'm not saying it's a plant you shouldn't buy if you like it go for it go buy one I did obviously but um just don't get the hype no but anyway so those are my two choices for plants that I find to be over and underrated. And thank you so much to Jimmy for including me in this episode. I really appreciate the support and I look forward to seeing what everyone else picks. If you want to check out my YouTube channel, it's just ants in my plants, or you can also go follow me over on Instagram. It's just at ants in my plants underscore. And I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of Jimmy's episode. Bye. Hey guys, it's Allie from Allie's Plants and today I am here to share with you what my pick for the most overrated plant right now to me is. My pick for the most overrated plant is Ripple Peperomia and I'm not talking about this Peperomia Globella here, she's cute, but I'm talking about these guys in here. I didn't start out hating these guys, but they're very finicky. The terracotta pots I had them in grew mold, but then when I tried to put them in like nursery pots or ceramic pots, they just were not happy. For me, they're very, very hard to keep happy and I just don't know why. And honestly, the, it's made me hate them 
It, it was really made me hate them. And I think they're just a less cute Pilea peperomioides. Yeah, that's basically it. I just, I just now think they're ugly and they're too finicky. And I don't even know what I'm gonna do with these little propagations. I might save them for trades or to sell. I don't know, but very not cute, just in general. Make sure you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, Allie's Plants, or follow me on Instagram, which is also Allie's Plants, which I'll be placing here. Have a good day. Hi guys, what's up? My name is Sam, and I have a channel here on YouTube, Sassy and Succulent. You should definitely check it out. Jimmy has asked me to share with you a plant that I feel is, mm, let's just say, a little bit overrated in the houseplant community. So, don't bite my head off or anything, guys. But... I chose the ZZ Raven. Now I know, I know, this is a very tiny little plant. It's actually kind of pathetic, but whenever I purchased this plant, uh, it was going for a pretty penny, and I didn't want to spend an outrageous amount on a decent sized plant, so I got this little guy for like 20 bucks and some change. Don't get me wrong, I think the ZZ Raven is absolutely gorgeous. I am in love with the black foliage. I think that is just so amazing and it's very uncommon to find in plants. Here's the thing. I've had the CZ Raven for several months, since the summer I believe actually, and it has yet to give me even one new leaf. There's actually no signs of new growth on this whatsoever. And it's getting a pretty decent amount of light, so I'm just kind of confused. I don't know, but I've heard other people talk about this as well and say that their ZZ took a really long time to grow. Another thing, whenever new shoots come out on this plant, they're actually a very light green and I've heard that it can take a really, really long time for those to actually then turn black. Now, as of recently, I have seen the price start to come down a bit on the ZZ Raven, which is definitely a good thing, but for the longest time, this thing was all the hype and the price was just outrageous. Here I'll share with you my regular green ZZ plant and I'm absolutely in love with this guy. I actually think the green ones are pretty underrated in my opinion. But this guy has grown so much, it grows so fast, even in lower light conditions. It still grows pretty fast, honestly. But guys, it's probably gonna take 10 years at least before this thing is even half the size of this one, so. It's kind of disappointing. So as I mentioned guys, I do think the ZZ Raven is an absolutely gorgeous plant. I do think the foliage is striking. However, for the price that I've seen these plants going for and the fact that I really can't find them in stores or nurseries near me, that is the main reason why I chose the ZZ Raven as just a little bit overrated in my opinion. Come summer, if I could find a decent size Raven ZZ for a reasonable price, I'll definitely pick one up, don't get me wrong. For the time being, the price is just a little bit too steep for me, so I will definitely be waiting to purchase a larger plant. Thanks for watching, and thank you, Jimmy, for including me. Bye! Hey guys, I'm Nicole from My Clean Leaves, and today I'm going to tell you about my most overrated house plants. And if you guys have been to my channel before, you know that I am a cacti loving channel. So what better than to talk about today than cacti? Let's do it. The most overrated cactus, which might get some heat from some of you guys out there, but I'm going to do it anyway, is the white ghost euphorbia. Now I have a tiny one here because I had a bigger one and I overwatered it so it got root rot and it died. I overwatered it, got root rot and it died. So I recently got this little one at the store and it's growing roots now and it is beautiful. I mean, I have seen them huge in the desert and like in stores and growing in pots and growing in people's backyards and they're gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. I just think that the hype is like, I don't know. <laughs> Again, I love them. I just think that they're just slightly overrated because I mean, there are other euphorbias that are beautiful too. And white ghosts, are, they're just kind of expensive. For what reason? It's just, it's a variegated cactus. I know it's white, so it's, it's really cool. Like it's not your typical green cactus you would see, but still overrated, mainly for the price. 
Guys, if you want to check out my channel, again, I'm Nicole from My Clean Leaves, and I hope to see you there. Thanks, Jimmy, for letting me jump on your video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey, hey, Reb here, Rebecca, just at Becky, and Elbert, and Poppin' Pants, and I'm supposed to talk about what's my most overrated and underrated plant. Overrated is the Thai Constellation and Variegated Monstera Elbow, blah, 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 and I'm super rushed because I don't have much time, and I love it, I want it, I'd love to have it, but I can't afford it. So what does a Poe girl always say? If you can't buy it, DIY it. All right, so I made my own Thai constellation slash Monstera Deliciosa Elbow something 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 variegata. Ready? Look, it's a half moon, although it's starting to brown a little bit. Isn't it pretty? Let's do a head test. It's still a baby. But it'll grow. I glued in the rocks. So it'll grow nice. All right. My overrated plant. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hi friends, my name is Ashley. I have a small plant YouTube channel called Plant to See with Ash and Jimmy was awesome enough to include me on this collab and ask me my personal opinions on what plant is overrated, in my opinion. I got the hubby here. What's up? Moral support, because he loves plants. You love plants, right? Yeah. He loves them. Okay, so number one, most overrated plant in my collection Faux show is Hoya Serpents. Look at it. Look at it. It literally, it literally does nothing. It does nothing. It loses. Yeah, guys, this plant, I don't know. It constantly, I don't know. It just keeps losing leaves, doing nothing, losing leaves, doing nothing. <clears throat> I mean, the payoff for the price tag of this plant is not cool. And you know what? It could be, okay, you know, maybe, maybe there's some user error here. But uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with my gut here. Mm-hmm. Hoya serpents. Is that even a plant? Uh-huh. I'll tell you what an overrated plant is. Now to the category of most overrated house plants. And um, I couldn't, with this title in mind, I couldn't decide or couldn't find a plant. I decided to like make it more like the most uh, complicated, anxiety inducing plant that does not give you enough joy back. So you bother with it too much and you don't get any, you know, return on investment on your emotional side back. 
I had two to choose from, two were alocasias, either the Lauderbachia or this uh, Varzevicii alocasia. Um, I know some of my plant YouTuber friends like Emily also throws, throw, threw hers out because she couldn't deal with it anymore. I completely understand. This is the, one of the most uh, sleep, getting sleepless nights over plants I have. All right, this plant needs uh, moist soil, but not too moist because otherwise it gets those like nice and yellow leaves. But also this leaf could look like this because it doesn't have enough water. So you never know exactly. And I really, I use moisture meter with all of my plants. Otherwise, you know, it's not happening. I water this when it's between a four and a five and I do this every three, three, so every two till three days I check and then I water if it says that. But still uh, it's droopy but might be that it needs to, that it's supposed to look droopy, I don't know. And also those stems like to like flop to the side if it's for like three hours, uh, if I water three hours too late and then it takes like at least two days to get back up to normal and it's, oh my God, and I, mo I, I missed it every day, but it's still, you know, whatever. So I would suggest stay away from this plant. Even if you touch the leaves, it feels like really, mm, it feels like baby rabbit or baby chickens. It's really, really a nice feeling, velvety, soft, furry, it's very nice, but the uh, emotional stress you have with this plant, it's not worth it in my opinion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All that I said, don't take it so too seriously. You know how I am. <laughs> uh, Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy all the other YouTubers you see in this video uh, and our collaboration. Thank you for Jimmy and I say Auf Wiedersehen and Dankeschön from Berlin. Bye bye. For my most overrated plant, I'm going to have to say it's the Philodendron Gloriosum. And I'm not saying it's not beautiful. Please do not come for me or Jimmy in the comment section. Not necessary. I just think that it was like a super duper hard learning curve. It took me a long time time to figure out the watering needs, took me a long time to figure out how long do I let it be dry, how much do I water it, and oh my god, one time I let it sit in a wet diaper and it about exploded. It's not the looks of this plant that makes it the most overrated one, but it is the care that makes it pretty overrated because I think everybody picks them up thinking that they're going to be easy peasy, and they're usually not. Thank you so much, Legends of Monstera viewers, for listening to my most overrated and underrated plants. Thanks, Jimmy. Bye. Hi, everybody. It is so nice to be here on Jimmy's channel. Thank you, Jimmy, so much for having me. This is great. Uh, my name is Nikki. I am from Plants, Pots, and Whatnot. Um, and Jimmy has asked us here today to tell you our most overrated and our most underrated plants. So this was actually really difficult for me. I had such a struggle uh, doing this. So uh, the first plant I'm gonna show you is the most overrated plant. Everybody loves this plant. I don't get it. I have a couple, not in love with them, but if you know me at all, and if you don't, I am the most stubborn plant owner. It has to be like, I mean, I won't give up on a plant unless it's at like, desk door and even then I'm like come on little buddy uh, so this is a plant that everybody loves and I don't get let me show you okay this in my opinion is the most overrated plant everybody is gonna hate me and I'm sorry but peperomia I don't get it I, I don't I try, I'm, I'm trying to like them. I'm trying to love them. I still care for them and they're still healthy and doing lovely and growing and all of that fun stuff. Not a fan. I know there's all these different varieties. Uh, Nick, if you're watching this, don't hate me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just can't do it. So this Peperomia, these all 
are definitely, in my opinion, the most overrated plants. Hello, I'm Vaya from Vario's Urban Jungle, and I will be honest with you, I had a really, 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 really hot time choosing an overrated plant because I don't really think there's such thing as an overrated plant. I kind of love all plants, and that is part of my problem, but it was hard. For a moment, I considered choosing the unicorn plant, the Monstera obliqua, but since I haven't seen it in person, and probably never will, cannot really have an opinion on that. So instead, I've decided to go with the bane of my existence, a very uh, common, easy to care houseplant, which is none other than... Yes. Spathifilum varlisi. I want to love this plant so much, especially this one, because it was a gift from my friend Vasiliki, and uh, I don't know what to do. It's supposed to be an easy to care, easy going house plant. It just needs water, and it will show you when it needs water, and blah 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 blah. And you know what? They keep on dying on me, so I, I don't know what to do. And as you can see, it's doing like so no matter how much i water it it's not happy no matter what i do it's not happy i can't deal with such fussy plants since i have a lot of them and as much as i would love to love it it won't allow me to so why are you waging a war at me hmm? and yes pun is intended since Spathifilum actually means sword leaf, obviously referring to the shape of the leaves. It comes from the two ancient and modern Greek words spathi or spathi, which means sword, and philo, which means leaf. And the specific epithet honors Gustav Wallis. Gustav Wallis was born in 1830. He was a German plant collector. He imported more than a thousand plant species to Europe, including a lot of orchids. Quite a few plants are named after him. Wallis was born in Lundburg and he was deaf and mute until the age of six, although he had a speech defect throughout his entire life. Despite that, he acquired considerable proficiency in foreign languages. His love for nature and botany was developed at a very young age. In his teens, he became a goldsmith apprentice, but he quit soon after and took an apprenticeship with a gardener, after which he got a job, which allowed him visiting the Alps to collect and study plants. In his mid-twenties, he was sent to Brazil, but the parent company's bankruptcy left him penniless, until he was hired by an orchid company as a plant collector. He then crossed South America, where he discovered more than 700 unknown plant species. He was later sent to the Philippines by James Veitz, and sons in search of more Phalaenopsis orchids. But even though he discovered different species of orchids, the expedition was considered a failure, so he was recalled. He was then sent to Colombia, where he found some really interesting and rare plants. When his contract was terminated, he became a freelance collector and discovered even more plants, some of which were lost. He fell ill twice with yellow fever, which proved to be fatal. He died in a hospital in Ecuador in 8078. Funny thing is that even though this plant looks like it has new growth. And as I was trying to take out some of the dried leaves, I guess this is what I got. So now what do you want? Tell me what do you want? Spathifilum valisi, also known as Pislili, is a herbaceous perennial rhizomatous evergreen plant which can live from 3 to 10 years. It belongs to the Arche family and it's a hardy in zones 10b to 11b. It is native to Central America in the tropical regions and rainforests of Colombia and Venezuela. It can reach 45 to 60 centimeters or 18 to 24 inches tall and wide and it needs high levels of humidity. When it comes to soil, it prefers a slightly acidic to neutral, and you can use a peat-based mix with perlite for extra aeration. You should water this plant very regularly, keeping the soil moist. Just be careful not to cause root rot.
You can keep it in a bright, indirect, or partially shaded spot. These are plants that can survive in lower light conditions, but they will not thrive or bloom. It's an herb purifying flowering plant. It has hermaphrodite flowers with a cream ivory spadix inflorescence. A spadix looks like a petal, but it's actually a bract. It is slow growing, and although it bears fruits, it rarely does indoors. It was discovered in the late 19th century in Central America growing in the wild. The wild plants actually have fragrant flowers, but the domesticated and hybridized varieties don't. It is toxic to pets, since the plant tissues contain calcium oxalate crystals, which are toxic, and the pollen from male flowers may cause allergic reactions such as asthma, hives, and rhinosinusitis. Even though I doubt you'll eat your plants, right? And I haven't had this plant for a long time. I've been killing all of these, so... I'm not sure, but it is kind of hard to make it real bloom indoors. I still think it's beautiful, but I think it's a bit overrated, or at least this one is, and the other one I have, which is almost dead. And oh, I don't know what to do with this one. Let me know what you think. Seriously, what do you want? What do you want? You have new leaves. You're schizophrenic. I did end up pulling most of the dried leaves and it looks decent. Okay. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully feelings weren't hurt too bad. Again, right? There's, you know, there are some plants that speak to some of us and definitely do not speak to others. Uh, <laughs> if some of these plants and some of these YouTubers spoke to you or you really liked uh, their vibe and their energy, definitely give their channels uh, a check out. If you guys are enjoying this channel, <laughs> please like, subscribe, comment below. It definitely helps me out a lot, guys. So yeah, till next time, happy planting.